All right, so welcome back to the channel. And in today's video, I am talking about Isabel Bonanato. Um, this is a designer that I've wanted to talk about for so long because I've been a big fan of her work and she's one of those designers that um, she's true to herself. Um, she, regardless of the direction that the fashion industry is going, uh, which has been very commercial for a really long time, she stayed true to herself. And because of that, uh, if you go on her Instagram, she has like 4,000 followers and just, I feel like she needs more recognition. So in today's video, um, I'm telling you basically some background information on one of my favorite designers, Isabel Beninato. So Isabel Beninato is an Italian fashion designer born in Naples and growing up, she was surrounded by fashion and art. Her grandfather was a painter and she spent most of her time actually just observing his canvases and studying his canvases from an artistic standpoint. Her mother was also a dressmaker and her mother and uncle also owned a sewing factory. Um, so as you can see, Isabel Bernato was kind of surrounded by garments, textiles and creativity. Um, so it was like only right that from a young age, she wanted to be a fashion designer and she was basically obsessed uh, with fashion and fashion design as a whole. In her early teens, she works on a craft at home uh, with her mother, uh, working for her mother. And, and she also did a lot of work for a lot of small boutiques um, when she was in her earlier teens. Uh, she then went on to study foreign languages at the University of Pisa. Isabel Bernato is one of those designers that had designers throughout her family lineage. Uh, so there was no exact reason for her to study fashion design when she could have just learnt from her mother and she did so many internships. So once again, like I always tell people, it's not necessary to study fashion design, but if you're not going to study it, you have to be in a position where you can constantly learn about fashion, which Isabel was clearly in that position. Now, after studying foreign languages at university, Isabel Beninato moved to London and she interned for many brands uh, for two years, once again, just working on her craft before launching her brand under her name, Isabel Beninato, uh, in 2008. Uh, when Isabel Beninato started this brand, um, it actually started as a women's wear brand and she didn't actually add menswear till 2011. Um, also, another thing to note about when this brand first started was the brand mainly focused on knitwear. It was like more of a knitwear brand than anything else. Um, so in her first collection, it was basically all just knitwear and then like a couple of blazers here and there. And that was basically the whole collection. So Isabel Bellinato is known for her knitwear and having like some of the most amazing knitwear and experimental knitwear. And that's why it's important to note because a lot of people might not know that that is the bread and butter of the brand. That is literally what the brand started with, which was knitwear before anything else. So of course, over the years, Isabel Bernato has expanded her um, range in terms of what she does make. Uh, she makes these really nice bags. She makes really nice footwear. Of course, the knitwear, which everyone loves Isabel Bernato for the most, as well as a lot of tailored pieces, you know, blazers, um, really nice fitting sweaters, trousers, and all sorts, all sorts. So when Isabel Bernato was asked about her work, she said, my work should be categorized by its research of materials, by the shapes and by the diverse manufacturing techniques and mixing of materials. I would define my style as contemporary, but timeless. And I like that she said her style is contemporary and timeless because like if I was to describe her um, clothing aesthetic, I'd describe it as kind of, um, kind of like experimentally minimalist, which is kind of a contradiction in itself. But Isabel Bernato to me is one of those designers that she, cause she wrote, and I'll read one of the quotes she um, said about this but she really tries to focus on having pieces that people can wear for a long time. And obviously she does that in the high quality of garments she produces, as well as it being really wearable. But at the same time, her pieces being wearable and minimal, they're also experimental to the point where they're not basic and they're not everyday pieces. They're still kind of out there. They're still extremely unique, but they're wearable. You can due to the color palette she likes as well, which is mainly black or white, which I also get into, um, it makes things more wearable and it makes, it adds for longevity in the pieces. And I really like that because a lot of designers, 
they say they're for sustainability and they they talk about sustainability but the clothing they make isn't clothing that people wear a lot in the first place so it's not the most sustainable of things they're still the type of clothing that people get tired of and just decant it eventually um so this is one thing i really love about isabel Bernanato's brand and literally to quote isabel Bernanato, uh, she said in an interview that her kind of goal in fashion is to make garments um, that are timeless and don't kind of go out of fashion after a season um, so like i said that's why she makes really classic stuff now going back to why isabel Bernanato is known for like knitwear and why the knitwear is so good um, is for starters Isabel Bernato's husband, um, his family business, they kind of run this massive um, kind of like production company that owns factories and they specialize in knitwear. So they make knitwear for big clients, big high-end brands. And this is a family business that has been passed down from like Isabel Bernato's um, husband's grandfather and like their whole family lineage. Um, so when it comes to knitwear, her husband, that is like his bread and butter, it's what he knows. Um, and obviously with her creative mind and her design skills, um, she was able to achieve this kind of interesting technique. Um, and now if you look at the knitwear that you see on Isabel Bernato's runway shows, some of my favorite collections from Isabel Bernato, especially when it comes to knitwear, is the spring summer 2019, um, the fall winter 2019, and also the spring summer 2018 collections where there's this really, really interesting way in which Isabel Bernato, she blends different materials in the same knit, in the same garment, and it creates this really, really unique and interesting look um, that I really, really love. Um, so yeah, that's a reason why the knitwear is just literally, the quality is through the roof because everything is done in-house. Um, so she can monitor every single part of the production, uh, every single process that's involved within the production of her knits, essentially. And when it comes to quality, um, it's everything that is made by Isabel Bernato is made in Italy. And what I love about how she makes things is she sources factories that specialize in specific things. So for knitwear, it's in-house because her husband specializes in knitwear. Um, when it comes to leather, she either goes for like Tuscany factories or she goes to Florence. Um, where they kind of specialize in leather and that's where she produces her leather um, pieces. So she kind of seeks out the best of the best in Italy. And this is, to me, is the true made in Italy. This is why her garments are so high quality. A lot of brands, they say made in Italy, but they like make the whole thing somewhere else and then they finish it in Italy and then they can legally say made in Italy. You have some people who hire extremely cheap labor in like parts of Italy that are so rural, the government doesn't even know what's going on. And that's basically still like a sweatshop just in Italy. Um, so those people once again say made in Italy, but it's not to the standard that when you see made in Italy, you expect. Um, so once again, that's another reason why I love Isabel Bernato so much. Now earlier I did say that Isabel Bernato loves to mix materials together, especially in the same garment and just in looks in general. Isabel Bernato actually said that she likes to fuse materials that are opposite in texture and she likes to use a lot of asymmetry as well as experiment with different garment volumes. And that's why um, in Isabel Bernato's designs, um, the garments are very voluminous. Isabel Bernato has said that um, the designer that inspires her the most is Yoji Yamamoto, which makes a lot of sense because once again, there's a lot of, in the way she designs, in the way her designs look in terms of volume, not necessarily silhouette and especially not the knits, um, is very, there are similarities to Yoji Yamamoto, um, but obviously it's different as well, especially in the use of materials. Um, and I'm a huge fan of Yoji Yamamoto as well, so it just happens that, of course, I'm then going to be a fan of um, Isabel Bernato's designs as well. Um, but what I love about fashion and what really fascinates me is kind of the impact of people like Yoji Yamamoto and how all these new designers like Isabel Bernato and many other designers that I feel like will be great in the near future, Yoji Yamamoto just inspired all of them and it just goes to show the greatness of some people um, in the industry when it comes to design. Now, in terms of color palette, 
Um, Isabel Bernato, once again, just like Yoji Yamamoto, she prefers to only really use white and black. And when she first started, she was exclusively using white and black. Um, over the years, this kind of changed. And in more recent collections, she uses a lot of reds in like, she has like red jackets now and like red knits, which you would never have seen before. She even has like yellow knits now, which you wouldn't have expected before. Um, but originally, and for the most part, she still only focuses on white and black. Um, obviously, she draws references from many different things, from music to art. But the main thing she really wants to focus on is kind of the wearability of it and the quality and the versatility of the garments. And another reason why she likes to use white and black is she said that um, she likes how white and black contrast each other and how they're kind of like the perfect contrasting colors uh, to achieve a really nice aesthetic look. And when she was describing black, she said it's like really mysterious, whereas white is kind of like a color that you associate with something being like holy, something being new. She also has a really interesting way of keeping us guessing with her collections because not only does she change silhouette from collection to collection, every designer for the most part does that, but it's the way she uniquely uses materials and she completely switches up the use of materials uh, from season to season. Um, so I have a, a knit piece from Isabel Bernato that I'll talk about in another video um, that is um, partially kind of like wool and then partially mohair and it just has so many different materials and it. it's crazy. Another part of Isabel Bernato's design I think is very underrated and very under the radar is her footwear design and she has these kind of like really round toe loafers um, that I absolutely love. But yeah, I hope now through this video you guys kind of know a little bit more about Isabel Bernanato. From time to time I don't only like to talk about massive established designers, I like to talk about designers I personally like that I own pieces of as well that I just want to talk about more because I feel like they deserve more recognition. Um, so hopefully you guys like her work. Definitely check her work out. Check out her Instagram. I feel like it's just so bad that someone who takes her design and crafts so seriously and makes such good garments is so under the radar that I just don't understand it. And then there's just people that have like really wishy-washy clothes um, that get all the recognition. Uh, it's, it's quite frustrating to be honest. But yeah, um, I do plan on making a video showcasing one of the Isabel Bernato pieces I do have and like talking deeper about it and talking about the like materials in it and stuff like that. Uh, so stay tuned for that video. Um, but yeah, on that note, uh, if you want to support the channel, um, the link to the Patreon is in the description below. You can follow me on Instagram at Fashion Roadman. Uh, like this video, comment down below what you like about Isabel Bernato or what you know about her or what I might have left out in this video. Um, and yeah, on that note, stay tuned for more videos and thank you very much for watching.